Hi folks, so for today's video I thought I might do something which I haven't done on this channel for quite some time, a first impressions of a Linux distro because Ubuntu 2010 came out just the other day and I thought I might give it a spin. I've got the GNOME version, the sort of the flagship version of the Ubuntu desktop uh, installed on my main machine on bare metal and I've been playing it around with it today, but only today. Um, just to see what it's like, whether or not it's something that I can use. And this machine I usually use for, you know, live streaming games over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Chris Ware, or, um, you know, doing videos like I do on this channel. So it's, um, you know, I thought it might be a good shot to test out maybe a new distribution for this machine right about now. So it's been some time since I used the GNOME desktop, so a lot of what I'm going to say is going to revolve around that as well. But just before I crack on with that, the installation process was brilliant. It was very flawless. Uh, I burned the ISO to a USB. Uh, I plugged it in, booted off of it, and it worked without any issues whatsoever. Um, and then I booted into the uh, the GNOME desktop, the one that you see here before you, and um, I got to install my software. Now I did choose the minimal installation option, which I don't usually do. Uh, usually I've got uh, you know plenty of, of hard disk space and I thought well better to need it uh, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it but of course you know it, it, by and large it, it it doesn't it's not that minimal like you've still got plenty of, of, of applications that are already pre-installed it's really just like LibreOffice that doesn't uh, that isn't necessarily included uh, out of the box which is fine I mean, to be honest, LibreOffice comes as an app image now, uh, and I actually kind of like using app images because at least you, you get a full control over what version of an application you're getting, and upgrading a piece of software in the middle of a uh, project that you're working on can be a little bit of a gamble. So um, it's I, I do like the granular control that you get with app images. I know that that's not uh, to everyone's uh, satisfaction, but to each their own, I guess. So once I was booted up and logged in, I then got to installing my applications. I do have uh, a list of all of the applications that I deem essential, and um, I had no problems installing any of those. But one thing I did notice was that, for example, if I was um, looking up, so this is the Ubuntu store, very nice storefront, um, but it's basically, it seems pretty identical to the storefront of, um, of, of 2004, the last edition of, of Ubuntu. Uh, but for example, one of the things I was noticing is that if I was going into just for example, Oz, um, OBS Studio, it gives you one version of OBS Studio. And you will notice that it is the Snapcraft version from uh, yeah, from the Snapcrafters. Um, it seems that the Ubuntu store is very much favoring the snap versions of applications because there is a version of OBS Studio in the repositories that doesn't seem to be listed on the uh, on the Ubuntu store. Now that to me makes a degree of sense. If you've got two versions of OBS Studio, how does anyone know what to pick? Are you going to expect the end user to know the difference between a snap and a um, application in the repository and the pros and cons there within? I know. So it makes a lot of sense, but it also does seem to lean into the narrative that Ubuntu is is really pushing into, you know, really leaning into the Snap Store uh, as a way of, of building an application store into a, uh, you know, into a Linux distribution. And, uh, you know, there are plenty of opinions around about whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I kind of guess that it's, you know, it's kind of complicated. There are, there are positive elements to it, there are negative elements to it. Um, there have been times when the Snap Store has, has given me uh, problems and it's not like I could switch to a mirror or you know, another repository. The Snap Store is very centralized. But then again, also with that centralization comes uh, quite a strong de degree of control. It means that there's just one place where you can bring down all of the, up, you know, you can, you can have uh, you can have like a long term support release of Ubuntu like uh, 2004 and still have really current up-to-date uh, packages on top of that because of the centralized control of the snap store so there are pros there are cons and I'm sure plenty of you folks will let your voices be heard down in the comments section below so um, but to install my programs to get up and running I was all good uh, now like I say I'm used to the XFCE desktop I love the XFCE desktop um, it's you know like I, I'm comfortably happy and it is my desktop of choice, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to go with the flag sh uh, flagship choice of uh, the GNOME desktop right now, and yes, I will be pronouncing it GNOME. Sometimes I slip and say GNOME because of, of habit and um, osmosis of people pronunciation, but 
I, I, I'm, I'm just, an, you know, I'm, that's just how I pronounce it, all right? Anyway, <laughs> um, so there is, like, for example, uh, some changes made to the uh, to the GNOME desktop in Ubuntu to make it almost, like, it kind of feels, to make it look a little bit like the Unity desktop, but not not loads like the Unity desktop, a little bit like um, a hybrid between the Unity desktop and uh, and a GNOME desktop. Um, I like the dock on the side. I like the fact that the dock on the side is like always visible because it gives you a quick access to programs that are already open and it's a great way to customize favorites and things like that. What I dislike, and I never realized how much I use this feature until it, it is deprived, uh, or, or, or I am deprived of it rather, is I, if I want to minimize this files window here, I can't click on it here. I have to click on the minimize button here. I can unminimize it by clicking on it there, but I cannot minimize it. Uh, I could, and I can't minimize it by right clicking. It seems I don't think as well. I can quit it. Uh, now I do believe that, that that there is a design philosophy behind this, and it's supposedly the idea that it should be just as easy to open a program once you've closed it. So you shouldn't need the minimize button. Fully closing an application and then reopening it should be enough. I mean, that's pretty fast, isn't it? I close files, I open files, I close files, I open files. What about the terminal? Eh, there's a beat there, but is it as quick as minimizing it? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, also, uh, with the standard GNOME desktop, you do not have the minimize and maximize buttons. The idea behind it is you might double click on the, t uh, the title bar or the, the bar at the top of the window there, uh, or you can right click and then do minimize there. Uh, another thing that uh, is different to the standard GNOME desktop is that you have up here, so you can see my little OBS icon that shows that it's recording the desktop. That is like a system tray. System tray has actually been removed from the standard GNOME desktop and has been re-implemented by, uh, by, by the Ubuntu desktop team. And I noticed this, and this is one of the things, this is, I suppose one of my little soft criticisms of it all is, is that the Ubuntu desktop team clearly had a design vision for this. Another example of, of a change that they made is that if you push your mouse to the top left-hand corner of the screen, in the standard GNOME desktop, that would show all the windows. You just have to click on the Activities button. It's a difference between a click and not a click. So you can see all my windows there by clicking on it. I really do like that it gives all your windows. Like You can click on something and all of your windows are right there in front of you, available on, of course, all uh, GNOME uh, uh, desktops uh, available on the Cinnamon desktop and I believe on KDE as well. I'm sure it's also available on others. A really good feature. I really quite like it because it just, it, you know, there's only so much that you can be, that can be portrayed by an icon. That shows you exactly where you are, what's doing what. There you go. So I've even got my um, pulse audio vo volume control right there as well. So anyway, um, however, to be honest, as I was setting this up, I did not use the activities. I did use the buttons on the side. So you do have a little bit of, there are multiple ways of doing the same thing in a desktop that seems to want to enforce a particular way of doing things. Uh, now, I like the GNOME desktop insofar that it gives you a very, uh, sort of a very simple and uncustomizable experience for the most part, because that standardizes the GUI and allows more step-by-step you know, the ability to, to, to walk people through um, graphical user interfaces rather than have to give them a command line uh, instruction just to copy and paste in. Uh, also, I do quite like how they do the applications. It does give you just a solid list of applications. But for example, if I wanted to group my applications together, so I've got software updates here, uh, or I've got two versions of OBS, I've got the repository and the, uh, the non-repository one, I've got some system stuff here. Oh, there we go, utilities. So you've got utilities as like a sub menu there. Uh, but what I can do is, for example, I could put uh, file, uh, no, I could put Chromium together with Firefox. There we go. And then we've got web browsers. And in fact, it even does give you internet there as a, so that's kind of interesting there. Um, is there any other, so I got, so I could put, for example, Audacity into uh, OBS, sound and video. That's kind of interesting that they do that, isn't it? Um, that it, how it how it sort of also or seems to automatically title the uh, that's re that's really quite uh, quite interesting um, and I like this because it, it gives you a search function there as well you can also push the the um, the Windows key you can type Audacity it'll give you Audacity as well so there are there are like lots of ways to pull up uh, uh, icons 
a lot of people speculated that this design was for touchscreens, but it actually I like how it works for uh, for the mouse as well. It works is very keyboard centric as well. It works very well for the keyboard. Uh, but yeah, all in all, uh, now. One of the things I do like that they did here with the Ubuntu desktop that, that, that is not here in, in vanilla GNOME is that uh, this button to show applications, you would have to go to activities and then show applications to do that. Whereas uh, with the desktop, you've just, got, you've just got a button right there. So if you want an application, right there. Now with the vanilla GNOME desktop, the idea is that you would have a whole bunch of favorites down the left-hand side and that would work, you know, you, you'd be able to do that. Um, and to be honest, that, that works. So it's a, I say a minor criticism, it's really just sort of a reflective thought really, more over anything else. Also, uh, when it comes to um, this uh, desktop here, they have desktop icons. I don't understand why a desktop, uh, a GNOME desktop has desktop icons. Um, but for example, there is no way to interact desktop icons between that and Windows. Oh, and I think I may very well have crashed the desktop there. Okay, so yes, that was a desktop crash, and I did have to do a hard reboot, which was somewhat unfortunate. I'm going to, of course, leave that in there, um, because I, it would be quite dishonest for me to sort of uh, edit that out. Um, however, uh, I must admit, the, the GNOME desktop, uh, as much as I like some of the things that they've done with it, uh, and as much as I like the GNOME Desktop uh, as an idea, and and, and uh, you know, in, in a lot of cases, the approach to uh, the desktop paradigm, it hasn't won me over. I'm afraid um, I have come across too many sort of little paper cut issues. Partly, like for example, the the thing that I was trying before the desktop crashed on me, is that there was no way to interact with the desktop icons with the File Explorer windows. That to me is a bit is a bit like. The, the desktop icons are really there as a cosmetic thing more over anything else or as a quick way to access maybe a handful of documents but then something like xfce's recently used um or you know like i think Marte might have it as, you know where you got like recently used documents seems to be fine or just organizing your doc you know it doesn't anyway it doesn't seem to be solving a particular problem uh, as far as i can tell maybe that's just me but um yeah, so, uh, you know, it, and I know that, or I, I've heard discussions of the idea of, of having them removed anyway, but um, anyway, that's kind of neither here nor there. It's a minor thing one way or the other. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure if I were to look into the settings uh, in, do, 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 there'll be something like um, preferences or background perhaps. Uh, appearance. Oh, uh, they do have a dark theme. I do usually make the icon smaller. You can auto hide the dark. Um, is there not like a desktop? Uh, no, files desktop. Hmm. I could very well be wrong about that then. Oh well. Uh, anyhow, um, one issue that I did come up with, and this is going to be the one that sort of moves me away from the GNOME desktop, is as you can see here, I've got OBS, and OBS is going to be something that I use quite a lot. Like I say, I stream, and I, of course, record these videos. Um, but one of the issues that I did come up come up against is, so if I've got my second scene here, and you can see there's a blank scene here, and I've got, for example, the files window here, um, right, and I want to record my files, the files directory. I've got it selected now, and as you can see, it is just uh, a black square. It seems that there is, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's something else, um, that certain windows are not captured. Certain, certain windows are. So for example, if I selected OBS Studio itself, there you go. You can see the, you can see the OBS is being captured as you would expect an application uh, to be captured. Um, but certain uh, applications, I got, oh, uh, Pulse Audio Volume Control, as you can see here, that's, that gets captured. Uh, what if I open up a turn up terminal? Um, I don't know if I need to, oh, there we go. Uh, the terminal there, 
you know, it's a blank, it's a blank square, um, or blank, uh, you know, blank window. Um, I'm not entirely sure what causes that, um, but as you can imagine, it's a bit of a showstopper when it comes to uh, recording Windows. Uh, so it's going to be something that I probably gonna, I'm going to have a look at maybe the Zubuntu XFCE because it's just going into the you know into the the desktop environment that I really you know I'm so used to that never fails me like it's just so, and it's and to be honest it's uh, it is uh, a desktop environment that I often do put in front of people who are new to Linux and they they get you know they they work well with it um so it's um you know it it does work it is solid and it doesn't let me down it just doesn't let me down. Neither does the Mate desktop, actually. I find that the Mate desktop uh, also I find to be quite quite useful. And, you know, uh, I, I know that I'm probably speaking above my station when I say this, but given that the Ubuntu desktop team have this vision of what a Linux desktop should, should look like, um, I, I would, you know, opt for a, for a Mate desktop over a over a gnome desktop because the gnome desktop seems to fall apart when you start customizing it to any real degree uh, and we haven't just seen this in ubuntu but particularly with antergos and other rolling releases the a new version of gnome would come along and it would break compatibility with all these mods and third-party add-ons and stuff and then suddenly you'd be thrown back to a vanilla gnome desktop where a whole bunch of stuff wouldn't work and you know try try putting someone who's new to linux in front of that kind of problem to solve and trying to explain to them all of that and i must admit i know that the idea behind the the next iteration of, of gtk and gnome is designed to endure that or is designed to cope with that um it always seems with the gnome desktop that there is something or it's, and it seems to have been ever since GNOME 3, there has always been some kind of pressing issue that needs to be taken care of, and it never feels like a completely complete desktop, even though it's it gets so close so often. Um, but I think that when you start customizing the GNOME desktop, you know, the GNOME, des GNOME desktop seems to me like something that is best experienced vanilla. Uh, and I think Fedora give an example of that. But even still, like I come across bugs uh, with it more so than the next FCE in Mate, and I, you know, I'd say, well, look, you know, I mean, Ubuntu Mate, great distribution. I've never had a never had an issue with, with Ubuntu Mate, uh, and it's only for my my, you know, uh, my satisfaction with the, with the XFCE desktop environment is is why I tend to opt to Ubuntu. I even quite like Lubuntu as well. Um, it's been a while since I tried uh, KDE Plasma, but I hear many good things about that as well. But I've also um, but yeah, so I might, I'm, you know, I may give that a go at some point somehow. But to be honest, you know, when it comes to desktop environments, when you've got something that works for you 10 times out of 10, you're really quite reluctant to see what else is out there. Um, so anyway, it's by and large really good. Like you could put this in front of most people and... It, it, they would have an incredibly satisfactory experience. But I do say, because I know that the OBS thing seems like a really sort of an edge case, a very niche scenario, but now we live in a, a Zoom world where, where you know, online conferencing is becoming the norm and uh, there's a lot of screen sharing involved with that and a lot of all that kind of stuff. And if it is a window manager issue, as I suspect, and I could easily be wrong with this, um, but I get the same issue with the uh, distribution repository version of OBS and the Snap version of OBS. But it does seem to me that, um, you know, in this world of, of Zoom conferences, the, that kind of uh, issue could affect more and more people. And these are kind of the things that GNOME need to get on top of because, uh, you know, this particular, you know, like these open source projects, I always feel are, are judged on their weakest characteristic. Um, and, and But that's just me, you know, like, it, it, you know, th there's a bit more to say about, like, how how people sort of look at open source software compared to uh you know corporate equivalents and and a lot of people a lot of, including myself we use open source software because we 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 love what it stands for we love what it means we love the the sort of the the philosophical and, and political ramifications of it all most of which you know like 99 percent of people out there do not even know about let alone care about um and it's easy you know and and, and 
sort of philosophically speaking, it's easy enough to move from Skype to Google Hangouts to Zoom, and it it makes no difference to to anyone other than the end user experience. But um, to someone going, you know, to someone who is involved in the open source world, to to move to a corporate um, equivalent or to a proprietary equivalent, you know, it, it sort of it it does seem like a, a more of a let. Ooh more of a letdown for, uh, for for me at least as well when an open source piece of software sort of lets lets you know lets the side down as it were not ne- not not anything in particular just in general uh be it a, a messaging platform or a project management platform or a video conferencing platform or anything like that you know it, it's um i don't know it's it, it it it's not as easy as switching out of skype for a google hangouts or anything like that anyway that's just a bit of a ramble and you know maybe some of you agree maybe some of you disagree that's all good um by and large it looks really nice this is a really nice looking desktop and ubuntu do put together really nice looking desktops um and of course let's do the display settings because it wouldn't be a chris Ware distro review unless we had a look at the background wallpapers that come with the desktop environment. Okay, that's quite nice, but very yellow. Nice colored uh, crayons there. That's good. You don't have many, not many pictures there. I don't know if they were trying to keep the ISO file size down. Oh, but a groovy gorilla, I get, I get it. So that's a nice picture. And then of course you got the groovy gorilla himself, the mascot of this um, edition of Ubuntu 20.10. Uh, yeah, I mean, outside of my own personal gripes with the um, the recording and outside of um, the, like, for example, the, the little things about GNOME, like, for example, not being able to minimize from the side, that desktop crash, the desktop icons being there when it doesn't seem that there's a logical reason for them to be there. Like, you've got these mounted de- um, devices here, but you've also got them in the sidebar as well. Um, so it feels like a little bit... Um, it does feel like, on the whole, a, a complete nice desktop, but also, at the same time, it does feel like a... A somewhat distorted version of the GNOME desktop, where something like Mate, which seems to be designed and set up more for customization, might have been a bit more of a nicer home. And uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Ubuntu Mate, and I think that's done a lot of things right. Um, but all in all, yeah, this is a good distribution. Ubuntu have, have, have done well. Um, there are obviously di- so, sort of philosophical and political ramifications for leaning more and more into the Snap Store. That to me strikes me as being a more corporate decision it certainly by this by how it seems uh makes it more accessible to get more proprietary software onto ubuntu and linux uh which is uh, fine you know and obviously from a corporate standpoint that's something that's a direction that you can see canonical would want to to go in um also when it comes to things like snap stores it does allow newer software on top of lts releases it does allow them more control over you know the software distributed on their platform maybe for like their corporate clients and all that kind of stuff um so there's certainly like logical and and pragmatic reasons around it i would love it if they open source the back end of of the snap store just on the philosophical principle of the matter uh you know uh, because it's not—it's not like the the technology can't be replicated with flat packs, um, and and you know I'm a big fan of course of app images, uh, so it's it's just that like with the Snap Store, yeah, it'd just be nice if they open source the back end, maybe you know just just as a sort of a gesture of love to the open source community, but um, and I believe I believe the same thing was done with Launchpad, and but anyhow, um, I think that that's uh, that's all I've got to say. Um, I do notice that snaps actually do work quite well cross-platform nowadays. I know that when they were rolled out initially, they were seen as, as um, you know, obviously snaps being an Ubuntu canonical project, but uh, I've tried them on, I think, like Manjaro now and, and lots of Ubuntu-based distributions may have tried. I can't remember if I tried them on Fedora, actually, thinking about it now, but any distribution I've tried on in the past year or so, just like sort of messing around with, they've all worked quite well. Um but uh it i will be interested to see how canonical and the ubuntu desktop lean into the snap store um in future editions because uh will that mean that their repositories will get smaller and and how will that affect distributions 
um, that are based on uh, Ubuntu. Does that mean that they're also going to lean more into the Snap Store, or could they go the Linux Mint route where they lean more into flat packs, uh, or does it mean that um, some distributions might actually start basing themselves on downstream Debian? Um, who knows? But interesting times ahead, no doubt. So uh, I think that's about it for me today. All in all, good distribution. I'm going to have to try a different desktop environment. So my, I suppose my issues with 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 the Ubuntu, this edition of the Ubuntu desktop largely reside in the GNOME desktop. But that's just a personal preference, isn't it? And I'm sure we all have our own preferences and requirements when it comes to uh, desktop environments. But um, you know, it's it's out. So uh, give it a look and. And we'll see how you get on with it. Thank you guys very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.